The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Girls Talk Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Jess Navarez, Haley Sutton, and Aisha Morrison here at the beautiful SWBC podcast studios at the start in Frisco. Guys, the more we're in this studio, the more cool things we're learning about it. (laughs) Um, Haley and I just had a whole moment a second ago where these change, the lights change. (laughs) I was looking at some of the comments about the studio, and they're like, oh my gosh, it looks smaller. Guys, that's tricky. You. This is a this room. is a camera trick because it's the same room, same size room. It just it, it's so clean and sharp I, in I'm here. I'm not gonna lie, I do. It does feel. It feels more close. Like I can like reach and grab you guys now if I wanted to. You know, like it just feels <laughs> more. Not in, me. If, oh, I, if I if I try, <laughs> girl. Me? You know what? All <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on. Just kidding. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was pity. That was such a pity love touch. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to move on this morning because Haley just decided to diss me in front of the entire world. Um, all no, love, all love. All love, all love. Uh, let's start out by saying you guys can text any questions you have to 817-290-3298. We're going to be taking some calls in the second block as well. So we will get that number out during the second block. But first, let's start with some updates. The Dallas Cowboys have had two open practices at the start in Frisco. It's still insane to me how fast training camp has really moved by. Yeah, tell me about it. It's flown by. (laughs) Um, So let's get into it because there's just been a lot that has happened in the last two days that it doesn't really feel like uh, it's been two days. So let's start with the training camp and then we'll get into a little bit of the announcement yesterday that was made about DeMarcus Ware as well. So Aisha... I'm going to defer to you for this because Mm. right before the show, I always ask the girls, what do we want to talk about today? And Aisha, the first thing she told me was Zach Martin is back and it's noticeable. So let's talk about the O-line. Let's get into that first. What did you notice with Zach Martin back in the line compared to what you were noticing before? I mean, he's just... He's just kind of the he's one of the foundations, and you know you can just see the stability, you see the confidence in Dak. I mean he he definitely looks sharp back there. And one thing that Mike McCarthy talked about um, last week was oh maybe one that look 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 y'all uh, training <laughs> blending <camp>. together. <laughs> um, but he talked about uh, just the timing and how that's something they've emphasized. And having a guy like Zach back allows Dak to his mechanics were good yesterday. Like he wasn't mm-hmm. he wasn't you know he wasn't draw, throwing off his back foot things like that. And I think a lot of that comfort comes from the interior of your offensive line being intact and having Zach out there you could just immediately see it's it's like it's it it, it maybe it's not super noticeable but it's like another half second another mm. second and for a quarterback that's a million minutes right sure. so it was just uh, dope to see him out there and the a- offense is executing at a high level in practice I think as well uh it's important to make those or I guess to notice those kinds of things because let's be real we're not going to see the starters play on Saturday that's a Mike McCarthy Mm -hmm. thing as much as I personally feel like we should at least you know allow Dak to get some reps um, what I'm excited about is that he is preparing in a way that is very game ready you know he's working with the guys that he's expecting to be working with and uh, I said this the other day too I I don't think it was ever a concern that Zach Martin um, wasn't going to be back at training camp but to your point, Aisha, it is nice when you can finally start to see the vision of what this offensive line is supposed to look like. Absolutely. And you know what, what I think that trickles down to as well is the confidence that you've been hearing this theme, reoccurring theme of confidence. You see that within the receivers who know it starts there and it trickles down to them. They have time to run their routes effectively. They have time to focus on what their job is and just play football. They're not worried kind of about saving Dak, if you will, to, to kind of scramble to get to their spot quickly. And yeah. I think you saw a lot of that last season was everybody was off their game because they're trying to compensate for other areas that just weren't being fully executed. Mm-hmm. And so I think what you're seeing, too, is the ripple effect of your receivers that are now playing so confidently. I mean, Brandon Cooks, man, I swear he creates wind 
I, mm. I think he is the creator of Wind, mm. like Avatar The Last Airbender, Brandon Cook's edition, because th when that man is running, I swear you can feel it from the press box, like a, a drift of wind just going by you because he's so quick. Um, you're also seeing, you know, C.D. Lamb, he, he talked about yesterday at the 2023 uh, season kickoff event, he was asked, you know, what is it like being wide receiver one? What is that? And I really like how confident he's talking about that position now. And he talked about, you know, one point during training camp, it was a mindset change. I believe it was on 105.3, the fan he did an interview too. He talked about he had to change his mindset. So you're seeing everything come together uh, with Zach Martin back. And I, I loved yesterday at that same kickoff event, Jerry and Steven, going back to your point about Zach Martin, mentioned Zach Martin. I mean, they were like, it's just so great to have Zach Martin back. So exciting stuff there. Haley, what were some of the things you noticed uh, in the last two days of practice that are just worth noting for the people out there that haven't come to open practice, they can't, or uh, they just missed it? I think Eric Scott is a ball player. Um, I am very interested to see how that translates into the game on Saturday, though, because I feel like what we've been seeing out of Eric Scott is he's had tremendous practice reps. Um, he's not afraid to go against the ones and the twos when it comes to practicing. And then when he gets in the game, I think he still just gets in his head a little bit. And that's to be expected. Again, these guys have never played really at AT&T Stadium in front of a Cowboys crowd. Um, they're facing off against professional athletes, a lot different from what he's used to seeing at Southern Miss. Um, so I, I, I loved him getting the interception yesterday. And what I loved about the interception that he got, um, it really was kind of a freak accident, if you will. Yeah, um, I believe it was Cooper Rush who chucked it up and it mm -hmm. bounced off of the receiver's like helmet. And then Eric Scott, again, right place, right time, was able to secure it. But I think some of the most important lessons that you can't really teach with these guys is instinct. And you can tell he has that instinct. That's, That's why the, he's here. That's the yeah, second absolutely. time he's had an interception where he ne didn't necessarily – make the play per se but he was there to make the play at the right time so uh, I was impressed with him yesterday but I've been impressed with him at practice I want to see him uh, be a little bit more effective in the games yeah just want to see it translate and um, I I really wanted to uh, touch base and ask like what do you put what do you tell a player especially like corner it's such a confidence based mm -hmm. position that's um, why they're always doing this even yeah, when yep. they don't make the play <laughs> i'd be like come on no on me it wasn't even catchable my guy okay, like, what are you doing okay sir but, um, I wish you we guys all saw just the seen what Haley just did like <laughs> but the, they uh, know what to do they know it's that was the typical intense cornerback no i don't know that, that was do. really intense no but i think but that might have been more intense than <laughs> an actual cornerback uh, i don't know about that <laughs> but but no like also too but you can also tell that there's a lot of people on this team that see his ability yeah. and they're rooting for him because that confidence also comes from it comes from inside your locker room yeah. it comes from your coaching staff and the way that the players reacted when he got that interception lets you know he has some people that believe in his ability as well I know he's had an up and down camp or whatever the case may be to this point as far as these preseason games he's been asked to do a lot take taking on uh, number one receivers in this league mm -hmm. and so um, we'll see we'll see how it transitions but um, it translates rather but you made a good point Haley I'm really looking for him in this last preseason game to kind of put it together yeah very good stuff there and you know what I I think is so very cool to see is you've you've heard these guys talk about stepping into their third year mm. under Dan Quinn and just how much more comfortable they feel with it because it is a very hard scheme to grasp and so you know like we we're talking about the other day with these rookie players it's a lot to take on but what is really awesome is to see guys like Leighton Vanderish come out and be that communicator Damone Clark is somebody that I'm just so yeah, excited to continue to watch because he has his green dot on during the games and it's just cool to see the the future, if you will, of that position being paved out by somebody like Damone Clark. I love watching the camaraderie between him and Leighton Van Der Esch during practice oh. and how they will go up to each other even right after a rep, talk about what to fix, and then they do it the very next play. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important um, to, to see. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, something else I wanted to touch base on was the running back position, because we talked about this a lot last week, Haley, we were talking specifically about Rojo returning and he did, he's back at practice. He was getting his reps in. What did you notice from Rojo and how did he look to you? We don't know if he's going to play on Saturday yet, but what have you seen from him in practice? I think he looks motivated. Um, and I think that, you know, Rojo's a guy who knows what's at stake. 
and uh, it's challenging. And I can never talk enough about the challenges that these men face in this profession. And I know that the easy answer and the narrative for us is that, oh, well, it's their job. You know, that that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to show up. And that's right. You're not wrong. They are supposed to show up. They are supposed to perform, especially when they have high expectations like Rojo did um, when the Cowboys signed him earlier this offseason. Um, but there, I also am a big believer, and we are big believers on this show, of giving these guys a little bit of grace and, and seeing, you know, understanding the struggle that they go through um, and it's a little bit easier to contextualize it when you're watching it practice so when I'm watching Rojo I'm not necessarily watching for you know how effective of a running back he is I mean yes to a degree because that's our job right uh, but the things that I'm paying attention to are okay what's his body language like mm -hmm. who's he interacting with on the sideline it, you know is he having conversation with coaches is he off to the side um, and so I think he's really working hard to integrate himself more into the locker room I think he's really trying to show that he's just been dealt a little bit of a strange hand at the minute um, and all he can do is show up and perform and I think the coaching staff knows that as well I hope the coaching staff at least knows that as well um, but yeah big decisions are going to have to be made come next week because the <laughs> roster has to get cut down yep. um, I, I do think of the four running backs that we've kind of seen the rotation of, I do think that Rojo gets the nod maybe over a Malik Davis just because his size is a yeah. little bit better. Um, I do think that Malik Davis really runs hard. I just don't think it's as effective as how someone like Ronald Jones would be effective long term. Um, but yeah, he's got a lot to prove in this last practice today. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, you brought up how difficult this cut is going to be to cut down to 53. And Stephen Jones talked about it um, on Tuesday when we got to talk to him. And he said, there's this is no question this is going to be the hardest 53 cut that we've had in years. And I think it's so interesting to be part of where the Dallas Cowboys are right now because it's not every year. And, and given I haven't been here but since last year, but from what my understanding is of talking to people that have been here for years before and have seen this team for the last 20, 30 years, that it's very rare and in between that you get questions to your, you know, to Steven and Jerry of, is this the best team you've had? And that seems to be a reoccurring question. Even during the kickoff event, DeMarcus Ware was asking, um, you know, Jerry and Steven about this team. So, it's really one of those hard cuts. Jalen Tolbert talked about the cut yesterday uh, after practice, and they said, um, is it hard for you to, to see some of these guys get cut because you're going to? And he said, yeah, but they're they're still my brothers. We're still going to support them no matter what. And uh, it, it's hard for the guys, too. They do grow these friendships. They grow these brotherhoods, and it's hard to see them leave. Yeah. yeah. And, and these guys. So it's a big emotional thing for everybody. All right. I did see your text, Jess, just now. I'm sorry. Yep. You asked about um, David Durden, yep. and I'm scrolling through the injury report right now. Oh, there yep. is um, – there's the first list – the first player listed on the Cowboys website is Ronald Jones. It says, Ronald Jones returned to practice in some capacity on Wednesday, giving him at least a chance to make his preseason debut for the Cowboys. Um, he was limited and returned uh, to his recap, rehab group after individual drills – uh, so it's a groin injury. Um, Matt Walesco practiced yesterday. I, I missed him. Yeah, um, he he's he was at practice on Tuesday too, I if cool. I'm not mistaken. I him. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, let's see, Sheldrick Redwine. Um, no update here. Mm. So, yeah, I guess we don't have the latest on uh, David Durden. Oh. But if I had to guess, it was for sure a knee injury. I'm, yeah. like, hoping it's not the three-letter three -letter acronym that has yeah. um, plagued the Cowboys. But I do find that to be really unfortunate. Um, but what I will say about David Durden is that he's had a really great camp. Yep. I think, unfortunately, he's just in a position where everybody's just a little bit more established than he is. Um, but I'll tell you this. I think – Barring, you know, positive news from that injury yesterday, I think he's going to have a really great season in the USFL next season or in the XFL or somewhere like that where he's going to really ball out. And I think he's going to have an opportunity elsewhere next season. Just needs to grow a little bit, get his reps sure. under him a little bit. He came from a smaller college. Um, so wishing the best for him 
in this injury situation. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure to keep you guys updated um, as we get more with that. But we're going to take our first break. Just a reminder, we're going to be taking calls here in the second break. If you want to dial this number in to start calling in, that's going to be 888 855 Nine seven. So make sure to start calling in. We're taking calls in the next line. This is girl or in the next block. Hello, this is Girls Talk Boys Talk presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and we'll be right back. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home, but to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation, so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today. Dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. If you've been thinking about weight loss surgery, My Bariatric Solutions has made it easier for you to schedule your initial consultation from the safety, comfort, and convenience of your own home. You'll meet one-on-one with a bariatric surgeon over a private and secure video call. You'll learn everything you need to know about the options available and which procedure is best for you. If you've been considering weight loss surgery and are ready to take the first step, call My Bariatric Solutions today at 844-326-326. 6266. That's 844-326-6266 or go to mybariatricsolutions.com. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled to perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby. The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. <sighs> Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? <laughs> That's the sound of you and everyone else absolutely loving new smoothie bowls from Smoothie King. And woo, me too. These smoothie bowls start with acai and pataya and are handcrafted with fresh toppings like sliced bananas, sweet berries, crunchy purely Elizabeth granola, and a savory peanut butter drizzle. New smoothie bowls, only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. back to Girls Talk Boys Talk presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to start taking some calls. We're going to talk a little bit DeMarcus Ware and Ring of Honor. But first, watch two of Texas's best high school football teams face off in the third annual Jerry Jones Classic presented by Whataburger. That sounds delicious. The Rockwell Yellow Jackets will take on the Cedar Hill Longhorns on Saturday, August 26th at 1 p.m. under the lights at the Ford's at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Get your tickets now at SeatGeek.com. You won't want to miss it something i wanted to make sure to mention today somebody sent aisha a message uh, (laughs) yesterday about when i do these reads saying i don't know if y'all have seen this like viral cat meme oh that that's her my, uh, my, gosh. my phone screen's very dirty uh but that that's aisha <laughs> wait the black cat's aisha yeah, yeah. the black cat's and aisha you're just because are you the blonde cat i'm the blonde the cat just talking so disrespectful <laughs> to said, say that this is aisha <laughs> he said he said this how you be looking at just what you know y'all can see that y'all i be trying to hold on i be listening that's what look that's what I have to deal with here. I have to deal with Haley's no love over here. I have to deal with Aisha looking at me like nah, this that cat, cat. That cat do look like it's done with whatever. And then your puns. When you be, we both be yeah, over it's, here. It's I've the toned puns it down. Me. I've toned the puns down. It's, it, it, was, it, down. it was the Gallimore for me. That's <laughs> the one that sent me over the edge. I that's the that, one where I said I've had enough. I think that's been, that was the straw. I've had enough. Girl. You have no idea. I have a list. I have an a ongoing list for the season. That's okay. No, they're ready to come out. They don't need Just it. for that. They're All ready right. to come out. Look, you can give us a call. We're going to start taking calls now uh, at 888 855 Two two nine seven. Give us a call. Ask us all of your burning Cowboys questions, please. Uh, Cowboys related. We are gonna try to answer. And we're gonna we're gonna do our best. The keyword is try. And, <laughs> and uh, you can uh, let me know if Aisha looks at me like that cat or not. Um, and if you have any puns, please call in and let me know what they are. In the meantime, let's talk about some Ring of Honor, ladies. Jerry Jones officially announcing and surprising Demarcus Ware yesterday during the 2023 kickoff event season kickoff event presented by blockchain there um that he 
is going to add a 23rd member to the Ring of Honor, that being DeMarcus Ware. And it was a very special moment because um, what you saw is you saw DeMarcus Ware, who was hosting the entire thing. He uh, was doing all the interviews with the players and, and Mike McCarthy showed up as well. So he was doing that. And then he was ending everything. The event was coming to an end. And then Jerry kind of the Jones family went up on stage and he said, hold on, not yet. Uh, you saw D Ware's daughter go up there as well. And Jerry just kind of threw it out there that, uh, you know, he wanted to officially announce that DeMarcus Ware would be added to the ring of honor. And so there was a press conference afterwards. We got to hear from Jerry and DeMarcus. And I think it was um, a very special moment for DeMarcus. You could tell he was genuinely surprised. He had no idea. So I uh, wanted a big, wanted to give a big congrats there to D Ware. Haley, you were there. It was pretty cool to see. I, I think it's one of those moments that you look back and you're like, Hey, I was there for that. That's that's historical. You know who else was there? <laughs> Bob Lilly. Bob, <laughs> Bob Lilly was there. No. Jerry, Bob Lilly Jerry told was us there. at least seven times that Bob Lilly was there. He kept reminding everybody that Bob Lilly, Bob Lilly was there. Bob Lilly and Bob Lilly only. Never mind Tony Dorsett was out there somewhere. <laughs> Never mind that Charles Haley was out there somewhere. <laughs> Bob Lilly, guys. Uh, he, he kept, yeah, he did kept, he kept reminding everybody that Bob um, Lilly was there, but it was cool. Yeah, I think too it's because Bob was like in the sight line. Like he it, was just yeah, right there right in front there, of him. So it was easy, yeah, but I did think Bob. that was funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody else mattered in that room yesterday Bob except Lilly. D. Ware and Bob Lilly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, um, when I think about DeMarcus Ware and his contributions to football and to this team, um, I think he really, um, it's going to sound dramatic, but I think he really changed the way this fan base thought about the defense. I think you had for so long, you know, that doomsday defense back in the 90s that was so effective. You mm -hmm. lost a little bit of that um, going forward. And then, you know, getting D. Ware back into the, or getting D. Ware into the mix, I think really reinvigorated the fans' love for the defense and why the Cowboys are so notorious for uh, their dominating defense. And you're starting to see that pick up again Micah. Uh, with Micah and some of those other guys on the current roster. Um, but yeah, I think it's a tremendous honor for him. I always root for D. Ware. He's the first professional athlete, um, one of the first professional athletes that I ever got to interview. The first was actual, actually Daniel Cormier. Um, but D. Ware was the first NFL football player I ever got to talk to. Um, he did an event back at his college in Troy when I was working in Alabama. And I just think that there's no one more deserving in terms of, you know, being grateful to this organization, being, you know, all about yeah. the Cowboys and continuing to lift them up, um, even post playing time. And so uh, just a really cool it's always really cool to see D Ware in the building, but to see him, you know, getting the recognition, this has been a big year for him. Um, and so I think just adding him to the ring of honor is the most appropriate next step for him. Yeah. Um, good people deserve good things. And he's one of those people that, from the small few times I've had the any type of interaction with him or just watching him from afar, I'm like, oh, that's seems like a good human. So nice. And um, he also too, he just was a big part of my childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we 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 were all of us. We were really integrated into football during like the Romo era mm -hmm. and then that time. And obviously, like you said, Demarcus Ware was such a big part of that defense kind of turning the page at that point in time. And I remember doing a celebration like at Thanksgiving and yeah. things like that. And so um, seeing good things come to good people is always encouraging. It makes you want to keep working yourself. And uh, I I just um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next because he's not he's a man of many many talents. So yeah. we'll see what yeah. he does next after he gets all these accomplishments. And yeah, he deserves it. He does. And what I really liked about his speech yesterday, and uh, one thing about Dwyer, he's going to give you a speech. He's going to give you a top notch speech, whether he's prepared or not. Those speeches are going to be great. He talked about how whether it be at Texas Stadium or AT and T Stadium, he would walk out of the tunnel and there's pyrotechnics of fire that mm -hmm. go off on the side. If if you haven't been to a game, there's fire when the players come out um, on on the field. And he would look at the fire, and I guess above the fire there was an empty spot right there on the Ring of Honor that he would always look up at and say, "I want to be there. I want to take that spot. I want my name etched into the star." And it gave me chills. We we're in the press conference. I just got chills and and thought about, you're right. We we were introduced to football because of guys like D. Ware yeah. that that came in 
and made a statement. So it was a really cool full circle moment uh, to watch him complete that full circle. He talked about how it hurt when he left for Denver. He called Jerry Jones his football dad saying, Mm -hmm. it felt like my dad was sending me away from home. Mm -hmm. And he said, "It, it hurt. But he said, now I got to come back home. Aisha's about to cry over here. I thought that was her stomach, honestly. I was trying not to do it too loud. No, he said, now I get to come back home and I get to stay here forever. Mm -hmm. So very, very awesome full circle moment there uh, for D-Ware that I wanted to make sure that we mentioned. But if you have any questions, guys, our call line is open. You can give us a call at 888-855-2297. If you don't want to call, you're a little shy, you can send us a text at 817-290-3298. Ladies, I want to ask you this because, like I said, we're in day, we're going into day three of open practice at Frisco. Other than the offensive line, because we know that the depth is, is kind of at question right now, are there any concerning aspects of this team that you you don't feel 100% about going into uh, not even just this preseason game? We're, we're going to start to look ahead into the regular season. Is there anything that you would like to see shored up a little bit more in these next couple of weeks ahead of week one regular season? Cowboys versus Giants. Yeah, it's going to be big. Um, yeah. I don't know that there's necessarily any concerns that I have. I mean, the offensive line, in my opinion, every year is a concern because they are the ones dealing with the other massive men on the other side mm-hmm. of on the opposite line. Uh, so you're always going to have uh, concerns there with uh, depth and, and how everyone's performing. Um, I am still watching the tight ends in the sense of I'm trying to see how they are going to um, I guess be integrated into scoring opportunities a little bit more I know that we've seen a lot of you know big Jake over the middle making a you know big catch when they need it Um, and I know that that's going to be a big part of his role but uh I want to see some Texas two-step Jake. I want to see Peyton Hendershot get off the line and get down the field and make an athletic catch. Um, Having John Stevens out of the mix, I think, is unfortunate. Uh, Steven has been very candid in saying that he was going to make the roster. He was going to make a push for the roster, which to me says that Sean and Peyton better get it together because that is their reality, right? Um, And I think Sean has a role here regardless um, with his impact on special teams, being the veteran in that room. But, yeah, I would really like to see them, you know, integrate the tight ends a little bit more in scoring opportunities. Again, I know it's preseason, um, but that's kind of what I'm looking at. Um, Yeah, the tight ends. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, mine's kind of weird. Oh. It's not weird, but I think that people wouldn't think it's a concern. But um, Kelvin Joseph's been getting work at the nickel. Mm-hmm. Deron Bland plays in the nickel. That's his strong part. It's mm-hmm. a strong suit right now. You have Israel McQuamu who plays in the nickel sometimes when there's big. He's doing big slot things. He did. He got some safety work yesterday too that I mm-hmm. noticed. Yeah. Um, and then I feel like oh, and then Jordan Lewis possibly returning yeah. at some yeah. point yeah. depending yeah. on at, when he can. Return. Yeah, he's possibly returning at some point in time during the season. Yeah. A lot of your depth at corner is at nickel. Not outside corner, mm-hmm. which That's is why I was point. asking you about, you know, Nishan Wright and this, you know, and so I, it's not concerning, but I wonder just how they swing that depth yeah. to make everything okay. Because right now, you're looking at no, like I mean, I understand Deron Bland; he's been getting work in the preseason at on the outside. I'm sure that's just in case, maybe or whatever. But that's just interesting to me. It's like yeah. that yeah. nickel corner spot is almost like four deep if you really look at it at this point, depending on how you look at Izzy. And I just wonder how they balance out um, the depth for the outside corners moving forward. So and yep, that would probably be one of my only other things that I was yeah. curious about. That's, yeah. that's a good point. Real quick, oh, we yeah. do have a caller on the line. Okay, We have Ronnie from Jersey. Ronnie, thank you for calling in. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. Um, how are you, um, Ronnie? You, uh, not, you're you're on our second episode that we've taken callers here on Girls Talk, Boys Talk. So thanks so much for for listening. No, I I love the show. I love actually all the shows. I listen to all of them. And um, I wanted to ask a question about the offensive line. Actually, you were just sure. talking about it. Um, I like that kid, number seventy six. Um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they always talk about the youth movement with the Cowboys, always talking about the youth movement. Movement. We want to see the youth movement. And I heard in a couple of shows that they've been saying about having, like, a trade for, like, a backup all line 
why not just stick with um, this kid? Because I've actually seen him in the games. He looks better to me than Walesco did before he got hurt. Yeah. And he's a left tackle. So Tyron Smith, we know he gets injured a lot. So what do you guys think? Yeah, I thanks so much, Franny, for your question. It's a great question. I think something that's been echoed by Mike McCarthy, especially this these last couple of weeks with preseason, is that they believe in these younger players. So I don't necessarily, you know, they're always open, you know, for opportunity in business if the right opportunity arises. But I think what Mike McCarthy is really establishing in this culture is is you do believe in your young guys and you draft and develop and knowing that you have to give them the playing time. They have to have that rust to kind of shake off. And that's why you've seen guys like awesome get those kind of reps during the preseason. So I don't necessarily think they're looking to acquire outside the building because that's just been echoed. Even Steven Jones said that uh, the other day that they believe in these young guys, they want to build them up. And, you know, Steven Jones gave his Steven Jones answer of we're always open for the right opportunity. Yeah. However, I think when it also comes to younger players, it's a confidence game. And Mike McCarthy is very good about understanding that of you have to build their confidence up, not knock them down either. So, um, yeah, I, I don't I think they believe in their young players. I think guys like Awesome have a very good shot. I think Awesome personally has a great shot to make the 53. Yeah, um, been super impressed by my bad. <laughs> been super impressed by him and uh, his willingness to be, you know, you get some of those Tyler vibes, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to do my job. I'm going to do whatever they ask me to do. And um, the tape's been impressive, too. I mean, he's dealing with just similar to Eric Scott. He was dealing with the ones on, mm -hmm. you know, on the uh, opposing team's defenses through this preseason. Um, his footwork is impeccable, and he's really – I touched base with him yesterday, and he w he mentioned just how much he's been working his hand technique. That might be really his only – knock or one of the only things that he has to work on and he's so adamant and open and aware about the things that he needs to work on and I, I love that about him but you can see his strength taking an uptick I've seen it since the start of camp till now he is really taking on um, I mean because when he's in those second team reps he's going against like Sam and Sam is a powerful dude mm -hmm. and they're really making each other better so his versatility I think is going to show up at some point in time during this season I, I we saw last year it's gonna happen. It's a seventeen game season. Plus three, the plus, plus the three they just plus played. three if you want to get yeah, true. So I mean, it, the, he is gonna have an opportunity. And to your point, I think that there is reason to be confident in his ability moving forward to step in if necessary. Yeah, and let's stay on the offensive side of the ball. Gabriel from Austin wants to know about Tony Pollard. He said, "I haven't heard much. How does he look to you guys? And do you see any lingering effects from his injury?" That's a great question because. To be honest, I feel like nobody's talked about him because he's just looked good. Well, I, yeah. think it, I also so believe <laughs> that it's by design. Yeah. I, I yeah. Just to your point, you said earlier, Aisha, that we're not seeing the full effect of what they can do. And I think the Cowboys offense is in such a tremendous position right now because their entire running back room will look different this season. The only guy really who has meaningful reps last year that's returning is Tony Pollard. Mm. And the whole league knows what he's capable of. But I, I believe that they've been working really hard to create some new packages, create some new things that's going to make that running back position a little bit more uh, dynamic. Um, I also believe that a big emphasis in this offseason, in this training camp in particular from uh, that position is working on pass protection because what we know we're losing when we lost Ezekiel Elliott is that pass protection for Dak Prescott. And so I think a lot of the reason why we haven't been talking about Tony is because he's working on different things, working on, you know, getting better at pass protecting, getting better at blocking, all that stuff. So um, I don't think people aren't talking about Tony because we don't want to talk about Tony. I just think that they've really done a good job of keeping him under wraps, at least for the first week. Very good point. Uh, Chris Beam, our producer for the day, he texted me a tweet from Adam Scheffner uh, with some NFC East breaking news. There was a trade with Isaiah Simmons being traded from the Cardinals to the New York Giants for a seventh round pick in 2024 per one of his sources. So just throw that throwing that out there for your little daily NFC East uh, update there. Uh, we also got another question, and I think this is a question that has been coming up often to my point earlier about what a special team this is um keith from kentucky he said great show girls thank you keith thank you. um he said do you feel like 
the they will make the hump over this year to make the NFC East championship game or possibly the Super Bowl? Do you feel like this team is capable of kind of taking it that step further and breaking kind of that mold? Um, Aisha, I'll defer to you. How do you how do you feel about this team? I mean, they weren't that far away last year, and I do think that they've put the things that you wanted them to shore up that you maybe that people attacked you with last year, you shored up, but also to just listen to them, listen to these interviews, listen to the the confidence that's like oozing out of these players and out of these coaches. I think that they're confident in what they have. And to your point, Jess, you mentioned earlier that this defense has been together three years. And I just think, I mean, I just think they have the opportunity to be dominant. And so, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly think that they have the opportunity to go. I think they have the pieces to go. Um, let's just see how they put it together, and hopefully this season is successful. Absolutely. We're going to take our final break. And when we come back, we have a special announcement um, that we've kind of been sitting on for a little while. <laughs> Um, grab your tissues. You're going to need them. And we have a lot to talk about when we come back. So make sure to stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. If you've been thinking about weight loss surgery, My Bariatric Solutions has made it easier for you to schedule your initial consultation from the safety, comfort, and convenience of your own home. You'll meet one-on-one -on -one with a bariatric surgeon over a private and secure video call. You'll learn everything you need to know about the options available and which procedure is best for you. If you've been considering weight loss surgery and are ready to take the first step, call My Bariatric Solutions today at 844-326-6266. That's 844-326-6266 or go to MyBariatricSolutions.com. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com is one of the most trusted ways to buy, sell, and trade crypto. Whether you're always on the go or stay closer to home, Blockchain.com is just a few taps away. Put the power of crypto in your pocket so no matter where you are, you can trade on your terms and build a crypto portfolio to fit your life. For crypto pros, rookies, and anyone in between, Blockchain.com makes it easy to own a piece of the future. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. Welcome back to Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We have a special announcement. But first, do you eat, sleep, and breathe the Dallas Cowboys? Well, tell us how you spice up the game for a chance to be named the 2023 Cowboys Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan, and win exclusive prizes plus a trip to Super Bowl 58. Nominate yourself or another today at DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. All right, guys. So, Chris, if you can take that wide shot again, I want to show them something. You might notice some balloons right here. There's some stuff going on over here on the desk. I don't really think you guys can see that. I don't want to look. We have a special announcement to make, and I'm going to let Haley give it to you guys. Um, Haley, <laughs> this is your moment, girl. Gosh, yeah. I have been trying to think of this moment and what I was going to say for like three weeks now, um, and it's been... Oh, it's been just miserable. I can't even look at you guys, seriously. Um, <laughs> I um, have taken a new job, and um, while I am so devastated um, whew, about leaving, um, I'm really excited for a new opportunity. No, guys, <laughs> stop <Sorry>. it. <laughs> um, I'm super excited. Um, I'll share a little bit more about um, that new opportunity when the time comes, uh, but I've really just tried to... Um, take this week to oh, hate, oh, <laughs> let it out. I hate you guys so much. Um, 
Yeah, I've really just tried to be present and be in the moment, um, you know, enjoying my last few moments here at the Star and with you guys and with these players. Um, it's been fantastic. And uh, I'll tell you guys a funny story. Um, I was actually a finalist for this job three years ago, um, back, I guess technically it was two years ago, back in 2021. Um, Kyle put me in touch with Derek. Um, I put together a really terrible reel just so I could get it to them, and it showed it was terrible. Um, <laughs> I still have my initial rejection email from Derek as well, <laughs> um, basically saying, we're gonna go in a different direction, but we'll keep your stuff on file. Um, and then obviously to have it come back full circle and to be here. Um, God's timing is everything. I'm a big believer in that. And he put me here at the right time for the right reason. Um, and so it's it's bittersweet. My last day officially is on Saturday. So I get to go out with a bang on the sidelines again and hopefully see a Cowboys win before we leave. But um, yeah, I have I have been hating this week every day just yeah. because I've been kind of hating this moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And Oh, okay. I'm I know, a big crier. I'm a big Aisha, crier, like, so like... don't don't look at us. Um, <laughs> Haley, when you came when you came here, we had, we had started this podcast, and uh, I Derek, sat right in this corner and yep, watched you guys. And Derek had told us, "Hey, we just hired a new reporter. Her name's Haley Sutton. I'll never forget. He was standing right here. He walked in to tell us, and he said she's really awesome." We instantly started creeping on your Twitter. We were like, "Who <laughs> is Haley Sutton? Like, we have to know who she is." We started creeping along and, and we found your stuff and we're like, oh my gosh, she's good. Like yeah. we started telling Derek, like, she's great. We're so excited to work with her. And when you work with somebody new, you never really know what you're going to get. You never know what to expect. You never know how things are going to fall. But what we do know, and I can speak for myself and Aisha on, on this, I, I know for sure. And I can't look at you because I'm going to cry. I know. <laughs> um, is you have become such a standard of your own work and you have set a new standard and a new bar for this position for the Dallas Cowboys and for storytelling within this organization mm. and we are just so incredibly grateful that we got to do this with you and create this beautiful beautiful <laughs> world of girls talk boys talk because it's groundbreaking and we wouldn't want to break that ground and break that glass ceiling with anybody other than you um so we're obviously going to miss you <laughs> And uh, you, again, are going to excel at this new, exciting experience that you're going to get to have. I know we can't talk about it, but um, it's awesome and it's amazing. And I'm so incredibly proud of you. And I'm so proud to call you a friend. I'm so proud to call you a mentor. Um, one thing about Haley is she knows how to boost your confidence <laughs> up. And being in this industry isn't always um, easy you don't always get that. <laughs> it's it's not always that. And one thing about Haley is she was always just such a light for us during the season when we were adjusting and getting used to being in this world. So I can't thank you enough for everything, Haley. You you really did change my outlook and my life this last year. So thank you. All right, Aisha, your turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be, be quick. Cause I, get me off the camera. Cause... <laughs> yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I'm going to be quick. But yeah, I just mentioned just when we came in and like this world, even to me, even less more than her it's just a totally different world i had to do a lot of adjusting to what this felt like how this worked and you just always kept me grounded last season and sometimes i just i don't think that you understand how much sometimes just pouring into me did for me and uh i'm retired y'all i'm done with my military stuff i'm done with that but i need y'all to understand that don't don't this ain't the one like it's constant i got your six and it, it, yeah it can get real 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 different around here around me especially about this one and it sounds like a small thing but i'm telling you the work that i've done as a veteran to kind of really transition out that lifestyle it it's on site so I, that's how i say i've never I had you. a compliment like yeah that. like it's, it's, it's on site but um yeah it's just it's been a pleasure working with all three of you ladies. I can't picture us not a trio. I know anymore. Yeah. That's it's really hard. Um, but yeah, just mention you said in a standard, and it has been a standard. It has been a standard set as far as like even our work ethic and trying new things and branching out. And so I'm. Um, we're looking forward to seeing what you do out there, but don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah, don't and be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally the most gentle way without me crying i can say like how much i care at this point yeah 
just know that you have done so, so much for this position, for this job, and it did not go unnoticed. You were Emmy nominated. That's a really big thing. Monday, fingers crossed. Uh, the best all way the, to go all out. the positive <laughs> vibes. You've done so much. The stories you've done, the connections you've made with the players, it has not gone unnoticed, and we will miss you so incredibly much. Um, real quick, favorite memory, if you had to pick just one, other than being with us every day, of course, because yeah, we know that's number one. That. Favorite um, memory. Gosh, I have too many to have a favorite, um, but I'll tell you one that is probably the most impactful, and it actually just happened. Um, when we, we we drove down to ARP um, mm. with DeMarvian mm. Overshone um, and his family, and just I've always wanted to be a part of a project like that where you're able to kind of show the human side to these players, because that's what I pride myself on. Um, I think... Um, one of my favorite things about our beat and about you know how the players interact with our beat is that they uh, they have favorites, <laughs> they have favorites, and yeah. uh, I'm happy to know that there's a couple of these guys who have gone out of their way to make me feel really special and make me feel you know like I'm important. And like you mentioned, um, you don't always get those moments as women in this industry. Um, so I would definitely say just. Getting to build those relationships, going down to Arc, Texas, and seeing Demarvion with his family and how important that was. Getting to meet his horse um, and go to his high school and just kind of see the person behind the player. Um, and I hope that when things get hard down the road for him, or when Cowboys Nation maybe gets frustrated with that linebacker spot in a couple of months when they're still trying to work through um, the depth, that they'll remember that there's a guy on the way who's got a whole community uh, rooting for him. So. Um, just all of the little stories that I got to do. Um, I've done some incredible stuff here. I wrote my first documentary that just aired last week, um, and that was really special to me. Um, training camp was a lot of fun. You know, I'd never been to training camp before, so uh, just getting to experience that and, again, just continuing to build the bond with the players. Um, you, you asked earlier, the text line asked earlier, if we think that this team is ready for a Super Bowl, and I think they're ready. Yeah. And um, my, my biggest hope in all of this is that in February – and I'm sitting on my couch or wherever I'm at, and I can finally be a fan of this team again and, and root for them publicly and, and shout from them out loud. And they're playing in that Super Bowl. And, and Dak Prescott and these guys are lifting that Lombardi because I think this is such a special group. And not only are they talented enough, but they are special enough to do it. Yeah, they love oh, each other. man, that deserved a round of applause. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. What man. a way to go out. <laughs> Haley, we're going to miss you so much. Um, I do have to note this podcast will continue on. And we'll still be here. Um, yeah. So you yeah. can watch us too. I mean, hello. You can <laughs> the, watch best, us the best part day. about this as well is that um, there will be obviously somebody else stepping in. Um, and whoever it is, I know you guys will welcome her in yep. with opening arms. And she'll jump right in and be just as effective with you guys. Um, so I, it, it's hard. But what I will say, and I wanted to echo this earlier, but I literally couldn't speak. Um, just like you guys say, you know, I set the standard or I did this, I did that. I can remember... I remember Aisha reaching out to me on social media before I even got here, and I can remember going like, oh, my gosh, like, there's a girl there. Like, I can do that. And then I see that there's a whole podcast of women, and that's when Jane was still with us as well. So Jane, somebody who I watched from afar and really tried to learn from a lot over her career. Um, so I just remember that first day and sitting in this corner over here yeah. and watching you guys and, and kind of feeling scared, you know, like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm supposed to jump in here and do this. And then the first day I hosted and I remember telling you guys, like, I'm so nervous. You yeah. might have to carry <laughs> yeah. this because uh, I'm kind of struggling right now. Um, so just as you guys, you know, lift me up and like, this is so nice. Um, I want you both to be proud of what you've been able to do. I mean, Jess, you literally went out and got a crazy good job yeah you've told every single person who said that you couldn't do this not only can you do it but you are doing it and you're doing it for one of the best outlets out there so that's not to be afraid Aisha you said that you wanted to work on the draft show and that you wanted to make an impact on the scouting side and here you sat for four months covering that draft yeah. and here you are to this day continuing to make relationships with the coaching staff and continuing to push yourself that way so um, I want you guys to be proud of what you're able to accomplish, too, because this is only going to go here um, with you guys here. All right. <laughs> um, we're going to go cry now. Um, <laughs> Haley, we love you so much. And I know the fan base loves you. We're all going to miss you. You're going to kill it. 
Can't say where. Can't say what. <laughs> it's coming. But probably just this weekend. Um, I really just wanted to take this final week um, with the organization and really be present and really just kind of focus on the Cowboys one final time before I unfortunately have to say goodbye. <laughs> well, we will be watching you on the sidelines for the last time and for the last time with Girls Talk, Boys Talk with Haley Sutton. Jess Navarro's Aisha Morrison saying so long from the star in Frisco. We will see you next week. I believe we're back here Monday morning at 9 a.m. So make sure to tune in. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!